Hi there. Um, my project that I have right now is to build a closet for uh, this uh, room we have here. It, uh, it used to be a dining room, but we're, we're converting it into a, a bedroom. Uh, and a bedroom needs a closet. This is an entranceway that there used to be a sliding door right here. And that I've, I've removed and it, it had entrance to the kitchen. But I want to seal this off and I want to put this kitchen area into more cupboards. So the first thing we're going to be doing is filling in this we're going to be framing this wall right here and then putting in the drywall. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build out uh, a 48 by 80 closet. So the project is going to be building a 48 by 80 closet, how to frame it, how to do everything. All right, we'll see how it goes. All right, uh, what we've done right now is uh, I've framed this wall. Normally you've got a certain spacing between uh, each of your studs. Um, in this case, I, I didn't use the standard spacing because the problem was that there used to be a sliding wall here and they didn't, they didn't do this properly. These 2 by 4 should have been the other way. So I could, I guess, follow these studs right here and go them, but because I'm just going to be replacing this, I decided to put a 2 by 4 here. This way there's going to be something to screw in this replacement piece of drywall in between. The other thing which I did right here is uh, as I hooked up some wiring because on the other side of this wall this is where I want a, I want a receptacle for, um, for the kitchen so that's, that's connected as well. Um, now what I'm going to do is I usually use this um, PL400 or you could use PL200 as well. PL400 is stronger, it costs the same. Um, what, I, what I usually do is I'll lay this on the studs and that way when I screw it in what happens is a lot of times these 2x4s, when you buy them, they're quite moist, and then over time, they'll dry out. And then when they dry out, there's then a space between the drywall and your joist. And then you bump into the wall, and then suddenly, the screw pops out because uh, there is a gap. But if you use glue in between each of your studs, it'll dry to the wood, and then it won't allow it to move when this wood eventually shrinks. And that way, if you bump into the drywall, you're not going to see those little little screw marks pop out. Anyways, that's that's just something I like doing. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this glue on, and we'll mount one of them. Oops. Because I didn't see what was coming out. You wanna go back, Lika? Piece of drywall. You, you never put the drywall directly on the floor. Usually you, you allow a little bit of a gap below it. When you put in these screws, you want to go uh, not too deep. Would you like me to zoom in closer? You want to come in here, Lika? So if you take a close up of how these screw it, now right here, this screw right here is uh, it's sunk flush, but you never want to go further. If you go further than that, what will happen is you'll break it, you'll break the paper, and then, then it won't be holding it. So just go flush. Only in the middle do you want to go a little bit more than flush, that way you could cover it up with the mud.
Okay. Okay, um, the next step, you'll see this all finish off, and we'll go from there. Okay, at this point, what I've done is I've put up the drywall and I've covered up that wall that was there before. Uh, the next step is to start working on the closet. Um, now, initially, what you want to do is you want to build the frame and then put the drywall in the frame. Um, but before we do that, what you kind of want to do is you want to have a plan for exactly how you're going to be putting up uh, the framing. Um, so you want to have the dimensions, you want to write it down. So if you come on up over here, you'll see I've kind of drawn a plan of how I want to do this closet. I'm going to zoom in on that picture right there. Okay, so what I've got right here, just, just try and hold it straight actually. So what I've got right here is this. Um, this is kind of the dimensions of the closet. And I've written it all down in terms of approximate sizes, dimensions. Um, so one of the most important things right here is uh, the size of the, the closet, how big the closet's actually gonna be. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna take down the directions that come with the closet and you wanna use that as your guide. And it says, so really the key is, what's your rough opening? And it says the rough opening should be 80 inches to 81 and a half inches. So I'm gonna need, once it's finished, to be around 81 inches finished to the drywall down. So I know that's how high my height is gonna be. And then the other part can be approximate. It's approximately uh, four feet wide. So that's the dimensions that I need for my rough opening to be. The second thing, before I, you should start building, because when you usually you build your framing, there's two, two ways you could do your, your framing and your studs. One is you build them, and you assemble it, you put it here, and then you bolt it to the wall. And it's already pre-built. And then you build the other one, and you bolt it to the wall, and it's pre-built. That's the most common way of doing it. But the problem is, what if you build it, and then you find out that the wall isn't true? What if the wall is not straight or square? <laughs> you're you're going to be bolting something, and you're assuming it's going to be straight, and then you find out it isn't once you bolt it to the wall. In this case right here, I've put this level in this wall, and look what I found out. It moves. And it moves because it's bowed out in the middle. It's not perfectly straight. This is straight, more or less. But, but there's a big bow right here. This is a, a high point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and I'm going to build it to this point right here. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to check, is it really square? So you're going to want to put a square and find out, is, it, is the wall square? And this is pretty square. It's pretty square. It's pretty square. Good. That's good. So that tells me that when I start bolting everything to it, it it's going to work out and it's going to be straight. Because you want to make sure that, that everything is straight when you finish it. And I look at this and the bubble lines up perfectly. And if you look over here, you'll see that the bubbles, the bubbles are, are centered. So overall, I've got a good wall that I'm working with right now, so I know the dimensions are going to be fine. So the next step right here is I'm going to remove this carpet, and I'm going to plan out exactly how far it's going to go, and then I'm going to, I'm going to be bolting the studs to the, the wall. I know how high I'm going to go. I'm going to go about up to here, and I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to leave a gap in the top. Why am I leaving a gap in the top? Um, because there's another closet outside which is very similar to this one, so it's going to match. And also I won't have to do to the ceiling. So anyways, that's how it's going to be. Okay, so normally when you build your uh, your stud walls, what you want to do ideally is you, you build this somewhere outside, you put it together, you bring it in here, and then you mount it. The only problem I've found is this, is that in a lot of cases, Whenever you're building in a structure which is already pre-built, it could have settled. It's not even. Like, take for example over here. Look at this floor. If you zoom in on this floor, this whole area, I had to grind out. Why? Because it was high right here, so it wasn't going to be level. Well, it won't affect this closet, but later on when I put flooring in, it'd be really hard to get in here and do that. So I fixed it now, just by taking it down a little bit. The second thing I found out is this wall right here. It's not straight. So this, if you come on over from here, this section from here to here is straight, but from here, it actually bends in. So if you go, if you look at it from here, it actually comes out a little bit and it goes in. 
there's a little bit of a bow to the wall. So I guess when they built it, they didn't build it perfectly straight. So if I went and I took this normal angle, do you see that gap over here? Come over here, Lika. Film from here. Come from over here. If you look from over here, you'll see that guess what? Doesn't line up. There's a gap. Well, I want to focus on this closet being straight. So if this wall is crooked, you have to, if you build these things straight and then try and mount it to a crooked wall, it's not going to work. So if you look up top here, what I did is I, I, I mounted these all to the wall, but then when I got to the very top, you look up here, there's a little bit of a gap. Why? Because I wanted to make sure that this wall was straight. So I mounted this one wall and I know this is straight and I know it's true to this wall, which is straight. So I know this is going to be square. So if you, you put this here, you'll see that this is level. So this is, is perfectly level. And if you go from this side right here, when, well, when I straighten this out, this will be perfectly level also. So this is true. Now, the second thing I need to do is I need to figure out, okay, if this is perfectly square, then where do I start my next, um, my, my stud? Well, this is a very handy device right here. This is basically a laser 90. So I lined it up right here and that's 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. So I knew exactly where to mount this stud over here. Film over here. I knew exactly where to mount this one because I know that it lines up perfectly. So I know that now, can you back up and, and film over there? So I know that now this is going to be a square closet. It's going to be the correct dimensions. So, you know, having a, having a 90 degree, having a, a good level so you can put and make sure that it's straight vertically and, and straight this way, check both sides, make sure that it's level. That's very handy. You know, this one's going to have to come out a little bit this way when I finally judge it, just because the wood is a little bit bent, which is normal. But anyways, I'm going to have it all straight when it's all done. So in cases like this, normally this wall right here would be pre-built. I bring it in and I'd attach it, but I'm actually going to build it up in stages now and finish off the last little bit. And then I'm going to put the, the top part, which is going to be framed in. So the last thing I want to focus on and show you right here is, is uh, this, this right here is where the, the stud has one side and then you put, this is where my joist is going to be. There's going to be uh, a two by six, which is going to be up here. And that two by six is going to rest right up top there and rest on another one over here. And that two by six is going to be what's going to hold the, the closet door, which is going to be sliding. So that's a, that'll be the next step. All right, um, now what I've done is I've completely framed both sides. Both studs are up. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to point out. Right up here, um, this is a header. This header, I had to use a, a, a two by six. Um, the reason I needed a two by six is that the sliding closet door is gonna, is gonna be bearing a load in here, and whenever you bear a load, there's a certain requirement as to how much you need. This is kind of overkill, you could probably use it two by four but here's a code in case you're wondering I'm just gonna hold it up right here so that's the uh, it depends on the length of the span that you have and in my case my span is 48 inches so I, I could have used a, a four by four um, or, or a, a four by four would it works or, or a two by four in this case I used a four by six which is slightly larger so it's, it's easily gonna take the weight but I could have gotten away with a, a four by four um, because my span was was 48 inches um, and right here this picture over here shows you how you put your trimmer studs up to the header and then you have your king studs on both sides of it um, that's just the format they use whenever you've got a load bearing wall in, in this case right here this is not your typical uh, installation up here because normally these this applies in a scenario where these studs are going to go right to the roof and it's going to be supporting everything. But in this case, it's not. And even though I'm going to frame the very top of this because I'm going to drywall it on, there isn't going to be a weight on it. This is going to be more than enough. You know, in a case of this length, I, I could have used a two by four. Um, as long as they're put vertically, <laughs> you never want to put them 
horizontally or, or, or they could warp or bend or, or stuff like that, and then you have problems. So how do you know if, if everything's right? Well, you the rough opening that I needed was uh, 80, according to this, it was um, 81, 80 to 81 and a half. I went uh, 82, and the reason is because there's gonna be a piece of uh, wood that I'm gonna put in here, and then there's gonna be drywall. So that's gonna take up one inch. So I'm still gonna have uh, about a, a, an inch easily to play with, but I could raise it from above the floor. So I got more than enough room. <coughs> Last thing you wanna check is right here. You wanna make sure that your walls, now that you've done this, this is perfectly level. This is perfectly level. And this one, perfectly level. So because this thing is completely square right now, I know now that when I hang my closets, I know I'm not gonna have any problems because it's perfectly square. As long as your rough opening is perfectly square, you're not gonna have any issues. So this is perfectly square, it's, it's gonna be great. Um, I'm gonna have no issues now, despite the fact that I had a crooked wall from, <laughs> from when it was built before. All right, the next step is I'm gonna frame in the top and then we're gonna drywall it. Ready? Okay, good. All right, at this point, um, all the framing is done. So all the studs are up. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting on the drywall. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already got a couple of pieces pre-cut. I'm just gonna lay it on this side and I'm just gonna show you how I use this glue. So if you come on over here, Ryan, right here, just take a shot of me putting this on. I like using uh, this because it stops it from, you know, if you lean on a wall and it pops out the screws, that's because uh, the wood will dry out. And when the wood dries out, it shrinks. And then what happens is uh, there's a gap. And then that gap leads to uh, the drywall popping out. And, it, and you have a screw, which you don't really want. Okay. So what I've done right now is all the drywall has been put up. Um, I used a few more pieces than I wanted to. Um, and I have a joint here and here. Normally you don't want to have joints in corners. You want to use one piece, but I, this structure is not bearing any weight on the ceiling. So, it, and this is an older house, so it's not going to shift. So I'm not worried about that. If this is a new house, you would ideally want a solid piece on your corners so that there's no potential for cracking. But all the drywall has been glued in place and screwed. And because there's no weight on the top, it's, it's, it's not gonna flex. So it's, it's gonna hold really good. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taping it up. I've got a uh, round bull nose that I plan on using for the, the corners. And in the inside where the uh, frame is gonna be, I'm gonna be using uh, straight 90 degree trim, trim pieces. So uh, I'll start mounting this stuff, tape this all up sanding it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is this. Um, what type of compound do you use when you put your drywall up? Uh, there's usually two types. There's jointing compound and then there's or an all-purpose and then there's a, a finer one for finishing. Don't use the finishing one in the beginning because the finishing one is not that durable. It, it smooths out very easy but it's so easy to prick or, or, or indent. So you want um, the all-purpose, or in this case, what I'm using is I'm using one that's uh, made specifically for, for taping. Um, and, and this one is for, it's all-purpose, but it's also for taping. So this one, when it, when it bonds, it's going to be a lot harder. Now, initially, I'm just filling in some, all the cracks just to make it more sturdier. But then I'm going to be putting in another layer, and then I'll be putting on each of the, uh, the corner pieces. So I'll get this thing all taped up, all drywalled. And we'll move on to the next up. Here's another update. Um, got most of the taping done. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just putting up uh, the edging. Um, in these spots where the closet doors are going to go, what I've done is I've put uh, square edging because this is going to be square. Um, so that's all done. Um, 
the next step will be to put a second layer of filler on top and then the finish coat. So what I like to do is uh, I put this on first, let it dry. Don't put it on too thick because if you put it on too thick, you're going to end up putting it on sanding, put it on sanding, put it on sanding. I like putting it on um, and then I just gradually build it up until I get to the final skim coat. So I, I like doing it three applications. First like this, second, I put it thicker and then and I'm using the all-purpose or the taping compound, which is a lot stronger. Like the taping compound, you could take it, you could put your, you barely makes a fingernail mark when you when you push in on it. Um, like if I push in on it here, there's there's barely a mark because it's strong. But if I use a finishing one, it it's so soft, uh, which means it'll dent very easily. So I like only using that for the for the very for the third coat, uh, and then I sand it. Um, so this is almost all done. It's all taped inside here and everything. Um, so now what I've got to do is just do this, this corner piece right here, which is going to be a bull nose. I'm going to do bull nose also on the top. And the reason is because other parts of the house also have bull nose. So I'm just going to be matching it. Um, so I've got it right here. Um, this is what I'll be putting on. It's going to go right here. And uh, you, you don't, you don't nail this one. Uh, you, you can, I guess, if you wanted to, um, but really you just, you put the drywall on, on both sides of it here and here. And then what you do is you just put it on and then you kind of smooth it out a little bit and take it off. So I've just got to, I've got to do the top, put it in there and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, uh, at this point I've finished up putting the last of the mud on top. I'm not going to put any more layers. So the next step is going to be to sand it lightly down and basically get it ready for priming. I've done that for here. I've done that for all sides of the top. And as you can see, if you get come close to it, you'll see that it's fairly smooth already. Um, I don't like putting on it really thick. That way when you sand it off, you've got as little dust as possible. So the only problem with this step, this is gonna take about two, three passes before you get it to this point where you're just gonna do very light sanding. Otherwise, you can put it on thick and there's going to be a ton of dust. Now what we're doing is we're just going around the rest of the room and we're going to go and uh, sand and clean all the rest of the... Don't go so fast. <laughs> we're going to sand and, and uh, fill in a lot of the dents because we're going we're gonna to repaint the color of the room to a different color so we might as well do it all at the same time. So next step is to sand this, prime it, and once that gets done, We'll prime a few spots in the rest of the, the, the room. Then everything's gonna get painted at the same time. Here I've got my trusty assistant, Alika. She is washing the walls with TSP. That way they'll be clean. And then all I'm gonna do is fill in the, the odd dent and then we'll be uh, putting the primer on. I need to get tools, so. Let me just... now what I'm gonna do is just demonstrate how to fill in little holes and stuff like that. If you've got little nail holes or stuff like that, you're gonna to wanna to use this and just, just make it a little bit bigger, that way it's not sticking out, that way it's, you fill it in a little bit. Um, just take out a little bit of the uh, drywall compound like that. Um, you're gonna to wanna to put it over top of it and then kinda of push it in, because you wanna fill in the hole. So push it in like that, and then just go lightly over top of it. Um, a lot of times what I like doing for difficult holes, wanna come in closer, is, is I'll actually leave a, a thicker layer on top a little thicker than what it actually is because when I sand it down then it's going to be smooth. The reason is because a lot of the times this, uh, this drywall compound is going to dry and if you just leave it like that and then sand it you're still going to notice a hole but if you put it like this and leave it on a little bit thicker then when you sand it down it's, it's going to be flush so that's what you want. All right, you want to leave it so it's flush. So this, you just sand off a little bit and it'll be perfectly flush, you won't notice it. All right, uh, now what we're ready to do is we're ready to do the, the finished sanding. If you take a shot around the room, you'll see that uh, I've already sanded these walls. They've already been touched up and they're, they're perfectly smooth. So these are all done, they're ready to, to prime. Um, so the whole room is ready, already primed and touched up. Just have to vacuum a little bit. What I like using is, I really like a block sander. These things, are square, but if you need, 
They can also kind of go around the corners and stuff like that. They got a coarser side and a, and a finer side. Very good for doing stuff like this. Um, another way is uh, you can get this uh, sanding paper. It's got holes in it, so it creates less dust and it'll cause it to just, these are for the bigger areas, for areas where you wanna make sure that if you use a block in here, and I, someone who's not new at it will sand too far and make it uneven, but if you use like this, you can just do it to make it uh, perfectly flush. And uh, this uh, powder, which comes off from the mud, um, it's always a good idea to have one of these just because it's so fine and uh, it'll irritate you. So you, you, you so if you do this lots, you, you should you, you should use it. Um, all right, so we'll begin. All right, um, at this point what I've done is uh, everything on the, all the drywall has been primed, but what I wanted to do is before I put away the primer, uh, I wanted to finish off the inside because I was going to develop a custom shelving unit. So what I want to do here is I want to put a, a rack in here like this for your clothes. That'll go like that. Um, then I'm going to put another one over here, and I'm going to put another one lower down here because this is for my younger daughter. So, and then bottom space, we've already, I've already have shelving that's planned. So this is a, how I wanted it to go. Uh, I used a two by four here because um, it wasn't gonna go all the way down to the floor. If it would've went from here all the way down to the floor, then I wouldn't have needed that. But in this case, I had to really uh, secure it well to a, a stud that's on the other side of the wall. And now, you can pretty well stand in this thing. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not gonna sag over the years. So now I just gotta prime this also, and then we're gonna be ready to put on the paint. The, uh, the inside of the closet was all primed, uh, including the, uh, the way I divided up the, uh, where the closet space is gonna be. Uh, I just did a test paint right here just to see how the new color is gonna look. It's, it's kind of an off-white, it's a tan, really light, really light brown. Um, anyways, that's what we're gonna go through for now because if we change it later, we could always go darker. Um, but for now, that's going to be what this room is going to be like. Anyways, uh, now we're going to start the painting. Okay, um, how I like doing rooms, um, people can put tape around the areas, around the ceilings and, and the floor, of tape off the areas you want to paint. Um, I've found that you use tape and it often, even with the best tape, it goes behind the tape and at least kind of a, not the greatest look, sometimes it goes in further. I just use a, a small brush like this. Um, and get it fairly wet. And I like just, just gotta get it wet. I'll just go like this and I'll, uh, I'll load it up fairly good. And once it's loaded up fairly good, I'll just uh, go like this along the edge and I'll do uh, my cut line. So if you come over here, come over here, um, if you look right in here, this is this is done. <laughs> Don't need to tape, way faster. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this all the way around the edges, and then this part will be with a roller. That's it. Here's a quick shot of how the cutting is going. You can see that you do the, you do all corners, bottoms, all around the edges, up there. That's kind of bright, over here, down here. Well, it's really bright. Up there. So all the corners you do, this is where I'm at right now. I'm over there, just on that wall up there. Now I just have to work my way across, do up there and do inside the closet. Once that, once all the cutting is done, then, uh, then I bring out the roller. All right, uh, all my cuts have been done in the room, so right now I'm just uh, doing the roller part 
Usually I like using a really thick roller, that way I can load it up. Um, and when I go, I go in a W pattern. You go like this and you kind of go like this. I actually went too wide there. I mean, you gonna help him? So you kind of want to go and don't let the paint dry on you. So you want to keep going in this direction right now. But you want to do it so that um, the paint isn't drying. <laughs> so you want to go fast fairly quickly, but not, not too fast. So this is what I kind of meant by a W pattern. You want to kind of go like this. And you only want to get the area done that you can do in, in one in one portion. More like a V pattern. Uh, this, this brush still has the odd piece of lint. And um, you want to always, your last stroke should always be in the same direction. That way you're always going down in the same direction when you do your last stroke. And then just keep, keep going in this direction. And All right, so uh, the second uh, coat of paint is put on. All the tape has been taken off. Well, just, just along the, the glass and stuff like that. If you look at these walls in the sunlight, you'll see that there's, there's no roller marks. If you use a, a 15 millimeter brush, that's what I used. And if you put the paint on fairly thick and you go fast and you go from, you keep going from wet, that way you're, you're not going from an area that starts drying and then you're not gonna get any roller marks and it's gonna blend in really, really well. So this turned out perfect. Um, so right now the closet's all done. I'm just gonna put up the, uh, the closet bars for the hangers and uh, maybe just finish off a few trim. This floor is getting ripped out, so it's not gonna be here anyways. I'm putting hardwood in, but that'll, that'll be next project. I'm just gonna go and hang up the, the closet doors next. Hi, uh, now we're at the point where we're gonna install these uh, sliding, uh, sliding mirror doors here into this closet. So the first thing um, we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, we're gonna have to install this bracket, which is gonna support the mirror. Um, first of all, we just have to cut it. So let's go cut it. Okay, so what I've done is um, to trim these things, you could use tin snips, but then you're gonna bend it and it's not gonna look that great. What I used is I used my grinder and I used a very thin uh, blade and you just, you secure it and you just cut it exactly like that. And if you look real close, um, it's, it's a very smooth, very smooth finish. I gotta peel off the plastic and clean it a little bit, but, and file it down. So let's do that right now. This is the only part that's gonna be visible, so really all you gotta do is just file this very front piece. You don't need to do the back because no one's gonna see it. Okay. Okay. 
That looks good. Just a little bit of overhang. I like that. Right there. Just a tiny bit of overhang. That'll be perfect just like that now. Okay, um, the screws that they gave me are these. They're about an inch and a half. Because you're going into drywall, which is going to take you up to there, there's really only this much which is holding it, which would be good if you're going into a two by four, but because it's it's that's not that doesn't give me a lot of confidence. Um, which is why I'm going to be using these eight by three construction screws. This way I know this part is into the drywall, so I've got this much which is going to be holding, which is going to be way more secure. I'm gonna come here and get a close up of the how it looks. So it's uh, nice and flush here, flush here. That looks really good. Um, let's go hang the doors. <laughs> now you, you don't put in the uh, bottom track. You do that last. Mm -hmm. So one thing about this uh, particular sliding door I notice is this one has wheels, but really these wheels they're just a guide. They don't fix it. They just so it's not hanging by the top it's actually resting by these wheels on the on the bottom so these wheels on the bottom take a zoom in right here that's what's going to be supporting all the way to this particular one those wheels so really this top part just guides it so this this doesn't this isn't load bearing believe it or not anyways to, to put this in let's go like this So I guess it's going to be resting on this track. How does it get the track into play? Oh, I got to I got to have to trim this. So you're going to be basically be going in the opposite direction. See if you see if you turn this way, it'll it'll raise the door. So the door goes up. So that's how we're going to be aligning it. But that's going to be a final step. Come on back out here again. So that's how it's going to be sliding. So the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be aligning this. Um, let's get the other one in. Okay, put on the final door. So what you want to do is you want to lift up these things right here. And then you want to put it in at an angle. How high is that? A little higher.
that's about the height that I want to get it. Now, if you'll film from back over there. So one of the final steps you got to do is you got to make sure that, that it's, it's straight. Do you want to film from right there, please? So you'll notice right now that it's not straight. So this end right here has got to go up. Um, or that other end could go a tiny bit down. So let's just start raising it up just a little bit more. Okay, so if you look at this, if you'll see right here, you'll notice that this is perfectly straight all the way down. So this one's done. So now we just have to do the next one. I'll line that one up. So this one now needs to be aligned. Uh, this side's got to go up. I actually want to have them the same height, so they both got to go up a bit. So you can film from here, Luca, and you'll see. We'll see when it's the right height. That looks good. That wall straight, this wall straight. Um, looks like we're gonna have this door opening like this. We grab it like that. You have access to here. Close that, open this, you have access to here. This is the way this door is gonna function. The other option is we could take this one that's recessed and we could put it in this side. Um, but we have to pull it off the track and we can have it like this. That's another option right there. Which way do you want it, Lika? Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know, I, I like the idea of having this one right here like this. So you're right. It's, they basically look the same. Doesn't really matter. So last step I do is, um, well, we're gonna screw this in. Now when you screw this in, you basically want to make sure the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from there to there. That's, that's easy to do. Um, peel off the plastic, which is the other step. And uh, what I like doing, so I've got these little felt cushions. What I like doing is uh, I'll just put them either here, usually at the bottom is a good place. You put them right here at the very bottom, and then when you, you stick this here, it's, it's going to be a softer close. You're not going to hear a bang. Okay, that's it. Cut. All right, so the closet's all done. Um, uh, if you come on over here, what I'm gonna do is just show how things look. You see right in here, um, it's, it's flush. It's, it's evenly spaced all the way down, which is what you want. I put little bumper guards in, in both corners. There's a bumper guard there, a bumper guard down below there. Um, but everything lines up. If you look at that, you'll see that it's it's perfectly flush all the way. There's the same gap all the way down, which is exactly what you want. So everything turned out to be perfectly straight. Um, that's the final result. Um, yeah. Uh, that, now the only thing I didn't do is I didn't finish the trim in, the, in that corner over there and I, and I didn't finish up the trim here or here. I just, I just put on just temporarily and, and obviously I left the carpet, um, it's all cut out and it's just bare wood. The reason is because um, the next step or our next video is going to be removing this and putting in hardwood. So this is all going to be in hardwood. So there's no point me uh, finishing these 
these trim pieces when it's all going to be removed again. But I just wanted to show you kind of how, how the closet all turned out and everything. So that's, that's the final result. Turned out quite nicely. Very, very sturdy. Thank you. So that's it. Um, other than this carpet is going to be removed and hardwood is going to be put in here, which is the next step, um, this closet's all done. It turned out really nicely. I uh, hope you enjoyed the transformation and liked the video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.